When using Photoshop, the generative fill function is actually incredibly handy for handling some things, but is not that great at others. But I have a solution today for you that can help. This is Alpaca, an AI art plugin for Photoshop, and I believe is a big step up from generative fill in many areas. It has a lot of tools, not only just for generating images, but even training your own custom models to use in Photoshop. Now, Alpaca are the sponsor for today's video, but if you want to check it out, it's free to try right now. Head to alpacaml.com, join the beta, sign up, and then you can actually download the plugin and install it. It'll integrate itself into Photoshop. And once you open Photoshop, all you gotta do is head up the top here to plugins, Alpaca, and then you get this little panel over here, and you just gotta log in with your Alpaca account you just set up. And then the Alpaca toolbar is good to go. You've got your Imagine for image generation, Sketch for converting to sketches, transfer for transferring styles and a few other really cool options in there. One thing you also notice is the different models like Stable Diffusion 1.5, Alpaca 1, 2, and 3, and you've got some advanced options down here for when you're generating images. But one thing I wanted to touch on really quickly is actually converting sketches to images first, because I believe this is one of the coolest features that this program actually has. So you can actually start to draw an image, or I'm gonna draw a few images and actually import them, and we're gonna test this out so I can show you exactly how it works. So on my tablet, I decided to kind of draw up this uh, warrior. Just a little bit of detail, nothing too insane. But uh, I've also drawn some other images that are a little bit more basic to see what we can make happen. This abstract image, which is just a few lines, there's a bit of a face in there, but it's supposed to be sort of more abstract and a very rough cartoony looking cat. Not my best drawing, but uh, still something I think we can have a play with to see what results we can get. But also I've got this image here, which is the hand in the envelope and the actual prompt for this with the sketch tool was just a creepy hand coming out of an envelope. And that's how we were able to get this result right here, which I think is pretty cool. But coming back to our comic book man, let's do that one and see what we can make happen. I click on Alpaca over on the right over here, choose sketch. And from here, this is where I can start to work. Now there's a few options. I can just simply type in my prompt here, but we've also got some settings such as how many images we wanna produce. I'm gonna go down to two or we'll three. Our sketch setting, we've got accurate, rough, or doodle. We can see what the difference is on some of these. And the sketch strength, color strength. We can say if we want to use colors. So you can tile, prompt strength. Uh, you can actually, if there's visible layers, you can put use colors in there and it'll actually reference that for those colors. But let's start off nice and basic with the default settings. And let's type in powerful angry warrior with horns on his head. And we're gonna say, wearing a headband and we have to select. So I hit control A to select the whole canvas and I hit generate. And we've got our options over here on the right. Now I can just click to add one or I can add all of these at once. I'm gonna scroll through, I'm gonna add them all in. And now if you go to our layers palette, we have a group here with our images in there. You can see the first one looks pretty cool. He's got glowing eyes and there's fire around him. The second one's similar, a little bit sort of uh, different with the eyebrows, but still very interesting. And then this one looking a little bit more like a sketch. I think number one is the best, it has the best look to it. But what happens when we change up some of these options? So I'm gonna turn off this group to bring back our drawing. So it references that for the generation. I head over to Alpaca and I'm gonna come down and where our sketch settings are accurate, we're gonna go rough and see what that gets us. So I've added them all in, and this is what Rough has gotten us. Some cool results again, a little less full on. If I compare it to what we had before, it's still very similar, but uh, just a different sort of way it's handled the image. If we check the description, what we want to do is actually more accurately tell the generator what kind of image we're using. So this is actually to, just to basically supply information about the image. But what if we decide to bring the sketch strength down? So we're at one, what if we pop it to, down to about 0.5? And then we'll go with accurate, come back to our layers, turn off that group and the other, to select our image. So now we're actually gonna reference the strength less, Let's see what kind of different results we get from that. So referencing the image less, it's actually allowed a little bit more freedom with the character. It's still followed some of the basic framing, but the images we've gotten are a little bit freer and probably a little bit more coherent. So if our sketches aren't quite as good as we need them to be, this could be a great way to hand over some of the accuracy and some of the positioning of the elements of the image to Alpaca. So I think the first or the second one seem to be the best. I do really like that first one. But here's something I discovered again by accident, is now that I have created that, I can go back into Sketch and go back to Tools. And now that I have this selected, 
I can actually use the same settings on top of that image to generate something different. So now it's actually evolved by basically using the image generated as reference to take another image. So this image, again, this is a really, really solid image. The teeth are a little funny, but overall, everything looks really crisp. The lighting on the side, the muscles, uh, does a really great job. And then it does, you don't always have to use it exactly as intended. You can always play with things a little further to see what you get. And it's the image quality and really unique tools like this that I think makes Alpaca just a bit of a step up from generative fill. But let's move on to the cat. So I have the cat here, pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go into Alpaca, into tools and sketch. This time I've gone a cartoony cat, drooling, wearing a hat, Pixar style. And I'm going to select the whole image and we're gonna go down to our options. We've got accurate. I'm gonna bring the sketch strength up to about 0.8. And again, I want the colors up and the prompt strength, I'm gonna bring that up because I want it to reference what I'm saying as well. You can adjust these settings and experiment with them, but let's generate and see what results we get. So as you can see, it's kind of got that Pixar style, uh, a little bit, not quite 3D, but overall the style I think is pretty cool. Uh, the, the tongue looks a bit funny on this one, but um, let's see what else we can make happen with this image. This time I decreased the image accuracy and made the prompt a bit longer, I added tongue out, 3D render from a Pixar movie in there, and that way it's got a bit more coherent imagery, but still references the general feel and look of the image I provided. So that's a pretty handy feature. We're gonna try the last one very quickly with abstract. This time I'm going to Alpaca, going to tools, and I'm gonna just say abstract art. So this looks completely different because we actually had the sketch uh, accuracy down. So I'm actually gonna go back in and crank that up. I'm gonna change doodle to accurate and generate. So you can see now we've cranked up that accuracy and we've got something that actually matches our image a bit more. So we're able to create and control a bit of abstract imagery just by drawing some basic lines. But what about adding an element to it? I've added an abstract metallic layers and then texture or metallic texture to fine tune and see what we can make. And you can see it's actually gone for a bit of a gold look. So giving it that metallic texture has allowed me to sort of create a bit of a weird effect with with metal. So being able to sort of create some unique textures from your drawings could be a really, really handy idea. And I thought I'd just try that with the Warrior to see what kind of results we get that way. And these are pretty interesting. Now let's not forget, if I create a blank document here, I can still select the whole thing and use Alpaca basically like an image generator. I can go straight into Imagine here. I have Alpaca version three. I can choose any one of these models and I can give it a prompt such as a cyberpunk waterfall. And as usual, I can add one by one or add all, which is what I've done here. And it actually, it does a pretty good job just as an image generator. Straight up, that is a pretty cool image. with other pretty cool images in there. So you can see the power of this platform for all sorts of things beyond just sketches and that you've got image generation. And again, we can change up, go back to tools, go from Alpaca 3 to Stable Diffusion and see what we get. So by switching to Stable Diffusion 1.5, we've got a completely different style of image again. Something nice, very different. And of course, you've got the other Alpaca versions. You can play with those to see what kind of images we get. But I can reference images also when using the Imagine function. So I've got an image in my document here, selected my prompt of a powerful warrior stepping out to a doorway of the sun, anime style. And under here, it says reference image. I'm gonna turn that on and choose pose. And it will try and copy the pose of the image. Whereas some of these other ones such as depth will capture the depth of the image and hard edge actually finds like the edges of the image and works within that. But we wanna kind of get that pose. So let's generate that and see what we get. You can see this one here, stepping out the sun into the doorway, exact same pose as this. And again, stepping out. So another pretty cool effect, but let's head back to tools and go from pose to hard edge. And I'll show you how it really replicates if I turn these off that outline. You can see we have another example here of how it's replicated that pose. And if I turn off that layer, it's in the exact same spot. I can take this, bring the opacity down. You can see how it overlays. So you've got a few different options there to reference images as well. Like I said, you've got depth, other bits and pieces there. So uh, have a play with that and see what kind of images you can come up with. One thing I want to say also is that these images are 1024 by 1024 and you can't generate anything larger than 1024 by 1024 when using this tool. If your selection is larger than that, it'll ask you to decrease the size of the selection. However, one thing the Alpaca does have, which is really cool, is upscale. So I can actually upscale what's on this document. So I'll upscale it, open a new document. We can go by two, 
up to sort of four. Now, I believe eight or 16 are in the works, but um, at the moment we can go a 4X upscale. So let's choose, we'll go back here. I reckon this is probably the best image. I'm gonna go back into Alpaca and upscale this to four times the resolution. So looking at this image, if I zoom in, it has done a pretty decent job of adding some detail and it hasn't just simply pixelated that image. But if I have the original image here, I'll turn on, you can see how much it's improved that upscale. Some of the information is uh, a little bit altered, but I believe if you're looking for a good up, cheap upscaler, this is definitely a good option. But what about if I wanna take that upscaler for something other than AI art? Okay, I have this image of me, which I use for a lot of my social media accounts. It's a little over 600 by 600 pixels. Um, so you can see the quality is not great. Let's give Alpaca a try, upscale. And at the moment we can go up to 4X and let's see what the image looks like once it's been upscaled. So now our image is 2428 by 2428 and it has smoothed things out a little bit. It's done a pretty decent job. While it doesn't look 100% perfect, you can see that it would be used for, useful for print or something like that. However, it, the image it was working with wasn't great to begin with. So I think it's done a pretty good job. Now, this is something where I think when it comes to AI enlargement, this will be excellent for what you're creating. And it may, may still be suitable for photos, but definitely best for the AI art side of things. So it definitely works well in with the package. So I think that uh, that's a pretty powerful option for Alpaca users, this upscale feature. And next we're gonna look at depth. Depth is a little more basic in the sense that what it does is it creates depth maps of areas. So I've got this image here. By going into Alpaca and depth, I can choose the entire document or the selected area. I hit generate and you can see how it's created a depth map out of that image. So what happens if we get a more detailed image and try that? So we have this crowd image. We've got some people up close and people further away. This should really show up something a little bit different. So this time I'm gonna take the whole do document, I'm gonna generate that depth, and we've got this here. Now this can be used effectively to, uh, in various platforms I can use it to isolate certain areas of an image. So let's say I copy this, I'm gonna turn off this layer, I'm gonna actually create a quick mask, paste that in, I exit my quick mask, and then I create a map. And you can see how it creates like this cool effect where we've kind of ghosted the closer stuff is closer, is sort of more visible, the stuff is further away, is obviously more transparent. So by popping, say, a color in the background, you can see what I mean. You actually use it for pretty cool masking effects. There's more to it than this, but this is just one thing you can do. You can also adjust this mask. So I can actually go into the mask itself, grab my levels, and because I've got the mask selected, I can play with some of those levels a bit, isolate certain parts of the image, and create some pretty nifty effects that way. Even have like a bit of a, a like a mist effect if I wanted to do it that way as well. So you do have some, that's a pretty cool sort of feature to play with. Probably the least exciting of all of them, but still a lot of fun. But uh, it's a very simple one. I highly recommend checking that out. So check out Alpaca. Like I said, they are sponsoring this video, but it is a really powerful plugin for Photoshop. If you check out their website, they have a whole bunch of documentation there. Something a lot of AI platforms seem to miss when they first launch. Everything is in here if you have any trouble, even just installing the plugin. There's a lot of information here you can follow to actually learn the platform more in depth. I've only really chipped away at the surface. So uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.